Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're now in section 722, Inductance, from Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, second edition. If I go too fast, you can always rewind, and be sure to put your comments in the uh, video or the comments below, video response or comments below. All right, so now we're gonna talk about inductance. So the basic theory works like this. So we have like some arbitrary wire loop, and it's another arbitrary wire loop like this. And if we run a current through, I'm gonna label these guys, this is number one, this is number two. So if I run a current through one, it's going to create a magnetic field. And then um, this magnetic field, if <clears throat> the magnetic field will uh, create a flux through this one right there. And a changing flux, as we learned earlier, a changing magnetic flux will cause an electric field uh, to to push an EMF basically through the uh, the wire there, and so um, uh, anyway, the interesting thing is that if we write down a formula for how the magnetic field is created at this thing, you're going to get something like the B vector due to the current in one is going to be equal to mu naught over four pi. Um, the current, because it's constant, running through one, and then the path integral, the closed path integral. Uh, DL1 vector, so we're over the one loop, cross the R vector, all over R squared. And um, that's the simple Bios of our law. And you'll notice that the magnetic field here is proportional to the current. And then there's these components that depend only on geometry. Okay, it doesn't matter what the current is, this, these, uh, this factor here is going to depend only on the geometry. So the flux through two, the flux through loop two, that's going to be the magnetic field due to the first uh, dot the area vector through two. So we're going to do a, a surface integral over this area here and dot each of the little area components with the magnetic field generated by one. Okay, And so we end up that the flux through two is equal to something times the current through one. And I'm going to call this one m to one. Okay. This is the mutual inductance of the two loops. More specifically, this is the um, inductance you get if you put a current through one. It'll tell you how what the, the flux through two is. All right, um, so we can rewrite our flux equation uh, using uh, the, the uh, vector potential of the magnetic field. So flux two, as we found over here, is B um, one passing through there dot d a two. Remember, we're integrating across the surface here, and we're going to replace the b one with the uh, curl of the a field, and dot that with d a two. Okay, some simple, simple substitution there, and then using Stokes' theorem, we can rewrite this. So we're, this is a surface integral. We can rewrite it as the path integral around the closed path integral of a one vector dot d l two vector. Okay. That's Stokes there in that last step there. Um, and so the A vector that's generated by current here is equal to um, U naught. Hope you can see this. Yes, you can. Um, the current, constant current over 4 pi. And then we have the closed path integral of the DL1 vector divided by the distance from the path to the point that we're trying to find the A field at. And so plugging these two together, V2 is equal to mu naught i over 4 pi. And then we have um, a double integral. Let's be careful with the integral here. So we have the outer integral across surface 2. And then the A vector, these components pull, pull out, of course, which is this cross integral one over r. And then this is actually dotted with the DL2 vector. OK? So we're just substituting this in here and pulling out these constant factors to the front. That's all we're doing there. There's really no magic. OK? And um, we, once again, get this, get this uh, relationship between the field, the, the, the flux, and the current. So once again, we get 
um, phi2 is equal to something times the current in the first loop. And in this case, the m21 is equal to mu naught over 4 pi and this integral right here that depends only on geometry. Okay, This is the, mu the Newman formula. It looks like this. So m21 is going to be equal to the double closed integral over the two loops of one of the loops uh, and then that is dotted with the other loop. Okay, And uh, you can rearrange things of uh, okay um, this is not a fun integral to solve um, but the interesting thing is what happens if you switch if you say okay what if I run a current through here and what's the flux through there and the answer is well the dot product doesn't care about the order and you can turn these integrals inside and out and so you find out that this is actually equal to m12 and so really you only need a single constant m that will relate the um, the current of one loop and the uh, magnetic flux to the other. Very fascinating. Next up is example 10 and then some more comments on this section. Thanks for your time. Bye.